Hi, welcome to the final tutorial in this section on um, assemblies within SolidWorks. Okay, in this section we'll be working on two examples which include the casing example, which is this example here, and the plate example, which is this, which consists of one, two, three components that are all brought in together to create our assembly. Okay, first of all the casing assembly. Um, what is an assembly? Basically what we're doing in the assembly is we're bringing in two parts or maybe more such as in a car there are thousands of parts and they can all be brought into an assembly to show the interaction between of how something comes together. All part, all things that you'll find in your everyday household, hoovers, bikes, they all consist of many different parts such as fasteners, um, nuts and bolts, frames, and these all come together to actually form an object, a working object. So in our assembly, this is where we bring everything together, all our parts we created and so on. But SolidWorks doesn't know how these all come together, so we need to do, um, we need to tell SolidWorks how exactly they interact with one another, and we do this using mates. So once we do this, then as I can see here, we show an animation of just how they come together, this will collapse on like so and fit on, just slide on like a case. And then in the terms of the plate, just close that, then we've got our plate and you can animate and explode. So we've got our bolts, we've got our top plate, we've got our washers and we've got a bottom plate. The great thing about assemblies is as you can see here, all these bolts are the same part. So we only have to draw one part and we can bring more than one of each part in. And then at the bottom there we can see the washers are the same and these two plates are the same. So I've only had to draw one, two, three parts here. Okay, and then we can bring them all in. If there's more than one of that component, then you can bring more than one in. And we'll show you exactly how to do that. And then in the animation also we can, we can in the assemblies, we can animate parts and how they come together so animate a clap so we could show a client exactly what what an exploded view is and how all these components fit together to work okay so first of all let's uh, start with the parts um, my parts are making sure are all located sorry about that on in my tutorial induction if I go into files uh, I've got case and plate which um, you'll be able to download from online um, more information will be given to you that by your tutor. Okay, so first of all, we're going to use the parts within case. So we go to SolidWorks, open SolidWorks up. I'll just close that now, save, rebuild and save document, and I'll close that, save, don't save. Okay, so now we're ready to go. Like if we were creating a part, we go up to File, New, and then we go down to Assembly like so. Click on assembly and we want to create a new assembly. OK. So here we go. Now we're in our, like in a part, we're in assembly. Um, but you'll notice there's a lot more different commands up here. OK. You can sketch within an assembly and we can edit also edit our parts within an assembly. But generally these are the things that we can use. So we've got insert components which we'll first be doing. Um, right. To start off with what I like to do when I'm inserting component, if you notice down here, okay, there's uh, there's no open documents open. So it's really good if you're creating an assembly to open up all the things that you're going to use within that assembly. So if I go to my files, which are located on my desktop, I go to my case files and I select back and front, okay, I'm going to open up the two parts I'm going to use within this assembly, just as open up the part files. So there's one part and there's the other part. So those parts are both open now within SolidWorks. Now notice that when I go to insert component in that open document area that was blank before we can now see that the back and front part are viewable. This is because they've been opened up within SolidWorks. Okay so it's always useful to do that. So right I'm first of all going to go back I'm going to we're going to put the back in first okay. Um, before I do this, okay, so that everything aligns, this is a good rule of thumb and good way to start with. Go to view and put in origins 
and you'll see the blue, two blue arrows come up. Basically, we want our origins on our parts to line up with the origins in the assembly. And you'll see just now, if I click there, okay, it will it'll kind of it'll attract towards the main origin. Now, if I click there, now we can see that basically my top right plane, they all align properly. So it's really useful to have all of our planes aligning with our part and are in our assembly so also the first part that we bring in if I try and move it it's it won't move but if then I bring another part in such as my front okay so guys bring in your front part notice that I can move that about don't click it to the origin this time just bring it in drag it and drop it anywhere because we want to assemble this properly okay so that that is the reason behind that if I right click on here see this float option at the moment it's fixed but now if I click on float it'll float okay but I don't want to do that I'll go to edit undo move component okay and I'll right click on there and click on fix okay because we want that part to be fixed it's always good to have one part that's fixed otherwise sometimes your assembly moves everywhere so general rule of thumb yeah have one part fixed okay right Okay, so I can turn that view off now. We don't need to see the origins. Uh, they're just getting in the way. Right, now we're ready to actually lining up our components. So we'll just, I'll just talk about a bit about the history tree over here. You can see our two parts are here. And what we can actually do is we can have the ability to go into features on here and edit them within the assembly, which is really useful. And the more you go on to use SolidWorks, we get used to that. Okay, so I'll go up to File, and first of all, we're going to save the document. So save, re rebuild and save document, and we'll save this as, just save it as assembly case. Okay, so save, click save. Okay, now we're ready to bring our assembly together. Okay, so how do we do this? So we want these two, obviously to fit nicely therefore we can use tools such as in um, SolidWorks to actually see if there's any interference between the parts and and so on so also I can go up to use in order to put these parts together we're going to use the mate tool which is the paperclip up here okay what does this tool do now basically we're now going to tell SolidWorks which parts will interrupt basically interact and touch with one another um, there's many different features in this so if we have a circular object as you'll see in the next tutorial with the bolts and everything um, we can use concentric tangent which uh, where we have a line along long uh, a circular face uh, perpendicular and parallel and these can also be used for, there's motion studies that can be used within assemblies, but that's, that'll be covered at a later date, so not to worry about that to start off with. Start off with, we're simply going to be using the coincident tool, okay? And SolidWorks will automatically basically apply uh, a mate that it thinks is right when you first pick your two faces. So in here, we're going to have our entities to make. So first of all, we'll select this face and this face, and notice what happens. Those faces become flat with one another and that's coincident so that's correct for now so I can green tick that okay you can green tick down here or up here next two faces which in real life would come into play with one another it'd be this face and this face okay so you can see now it's fully aligned apart from these faces here so I can green tick I'm going to green tick up there this time now if I go to move this part notice I can't actually move it away from the mates okay so now it is fully defined apart from these two final faces here so we'll just add the final faces which if we zoom in and select this face here would should come in contact with then this face here and remember guys it's really useful get to grips with using our middle mouse scroller button okay so now once I click here now a green tick a green tick again and a box is fully defined okay so we can't actually move any of it and now if we do like a, a feature collision uh, to see if there's any collision between them um, we can see because it's fully defined okay and now where well what if I've got one of the mates wrong or 
So you can just like on your feature tree, you can go back into the mate. So I say if I've got this one wrong, and I actually wanted a slight distance between it, I can right click on it, I can go edit feature, and we can use the distance here, and I could put in say 20 mil. That I want that to be 20 mil away from there. Green tick, green tick, and now that's changed to a distance, but that's not the way I wanted to. I wanted to show that it is possible to go back into mates. If you don't like a mate, you can just delete it. Um, so to edit the mate, again, right click, edit feature. I'm just going to change it back to the way it was. Coincident, green tick. Okay, green tick that. And once it's finished, we always save. And now I can, now I'm ready to uh, start the final uh, tutorial on assembling the plate.